So for f of x equals 1 over x minus 4, notice that this function is discontinuous at x equals 4. The function's not even defined at x equals 4. We have division by 0. Looking at a plot of this function, this function has a vertical asymptote at x equals 4. And the graph of this function would look something like this. It's like the graph of 1 over x, but shifted 4 units to the right. And notice that the one-sided limit as x approaches 4 from the left would be negative infinity. The one-sided limit as x approaches 4 from the right would be positive infinity. The one-sided limits aren't even existing. They're infinite results, and they're not equal. And for all of these reasons, and, and the fact that f of 4 itself doesn't even exist, um, this function is definitely discontinuous at x equals 4. And uh, an intuitive way to think about continuity is to think about whether you could draw this curve and pass through x equals 4 without taking your pencil off of the paper. And we can't do that for this function. OK, let's look at this function g of x. Notice that g of x is discontinuous at x equals 5 because of division by 0 at 5. However, notice also that the numerator of this function factors as x plus 5 times x minus 5, and that if we then canceled out the factors of x minus 5, we'd be left with x plus 5. So while it is definitely the case that this function is discontinuous, at x equals 5, it's a sort of a less serious type of discontinuity because all that's going on at 5 is that we have a little open circle there because our function is undefined at 5. And I have a, a y scale here where the, the y intercept, excuse me, is up here at y equals 5. And um, my curve almost makes it look like it's passing through the origin. And let me maybe try to draw this line just a little bit better so that it doesn't look like that. So let me clean up my axes here and draw the line back in with its intercept up at 5. OK. And um, so again, I want to point out that at x equals 5, all that's going on here is that we have a little open circle at x equals 5. And it's a very, a very not serious type of discontinuity. And this type of discontinuity is called a removable discontinuity. Because if we were simply to replace our fraction by the function f of x equals x plus 5, we'd have exactly the same graph, but with that open circle filled in. So it's called a removable discontinuity, but it is truly a discontinuity. This function g of x really is discontinuous at x equals 5. So finally, let's look at h of x equals absolute value of x over x. We looked at this function in one of the limit tutorials as well. And we can see that this function is discontinuous at x equals 0 because we would have division by 0 there. If we were to graph this function, again, the graph appeared in that earlier limit tutorial. And the graph of this function looked like the following. So heading in towards x equals 0 from the left, we had values of negative 1. Heading to the positive side of x equals 0, we had values of 1. The function's not defined at 0. And the two one-sided limits don't agree with one another. And again, the function doesn't even exist at 0. So this function is definitely discontinuous at 0. 
And the type of discontinuity is called a jump discontinuity. And the name makes sense. It's just pointing out that the curve is taking a jump at x equals 0. We couldn't draw this graph without taking our pen off the paper. OK, so those are three examples of three different types of discontinuities. All three of these examples had discontinuities due to division by 0. Other things to watch for would be things like a square root function where um, the argument of the square root function can't go negative, um, a natural logarithm function where, again, the argument can't be 0 or negative, just anything that does not work for the function you're looking at would be pointing you towards a discontinuity.